Uh, what does it mean for you to, uh, you know, beat a, beat a really good Suns team twice in your home floor, three days here? Uh, I think that's big for us. Um, like I said, last game, the Suns, they've earned their resume. They are a great team. So for us to get two back-to-back -back wins against them, uh, that's uh, big for our confidence. You've been closing a lot of these games with Larry this season. Um, you know, what do you think about playing next to him and, and that combination? I, I like uh, playing next to Larry uh, on the court because uh, he provides such a kind of unique spacing in terms of like corner or in that short uh, short corner because you throw it to him and he can just rise up and just put somebody through the rim or he'll hit the corner three. So. Uh, closing the game with him, it uh, gives more spacing. Even even last spring, Larry was telling us like, just just wait till we get Zion back. Like a lot of, of vocal support. Could you could you sense that that he's really been a guy, you know, kind of in your corner since he came here? Uh, since the first time uh, I interacted with him when he came to New Orleans, uh, him and CJ, uh, they just always been there, been in my ear, just put me on games, some things, just let me know your your time gonna come next season. I know we talk always a lot about Dyson and the job that he's been doing, but what do you think about him in those switch of lineups where, where he can defend the five and the, and the role as, as, as well as he did tonight here in overtime? Like I said, man, Dyson is athletic. Uh, that deflection he got uh, late in the game, man, that that was a big deflection. Um, especially after what, whatever happened to him. Uh, I don't know whether it was ankle, knee, or what it was, but – uh, for him to come back in the game after that and make those plays, uh, and that, that's respect. I respect that. And this was kind of like a playoff like experience for you in that you played them on Friday. You see them again today, know, knowing they're going to come in with some adjustments, how to defend you. Just what was that like seeing the way they did th things differently today, and how did you adjust to it? I mean, it's like I said in my post-game interview uh, Friday night, um, you know, they're, they're a great team, so they are going to make adjustments. And if we want to be a great team, too, uh, we got to make adjustments as well, figure out what they're going to try to stop. And uh, Coach Green and especially Teresa Witherspoon and Corey Brewer, they, uh, they really prepared me for this game. And just, uh, just can you describe the, the impact Najee has on you guys on and off the court, just with everything he does, personality, his versatility on the court, all that kind of stuff? <laughs> Najee is like a, man, he's like a Swiss Army knife. Like, he can just do a lot of things very well. Uh, and he's a he's a team guy, uh, whether he's sitting on the bench or when he's on whether he's on the court. Uh, if you need him to do something, uh, he, he step up and he brings energy. <coughs> Even in those moments where uh, I talk about Jose a lot, Najee be right there. Uh, those two are always right there bringing that energy and the physicality. Have these past seven games, and you're averaging about 30 points, that stretch. Have they helped you um, understand anything about the influence that you can have on this team and, and want to have going forward? Uh, it helped me understand that uh, we number one in the West right now. Um, I know to a lot of people that's not a big deal because I know it's early in the season, but you know, for us to kind of have that ranking right now, uh, that's big and we want to not only hold on to it, but Build on it, cause uh, we have a deep team, and we have a spe we all have a special bond. So everybody is happy to see each other do well. So like I say all the time, my teammates and my coaches they give me confidence to go out there and be me, and I give my teammates and coaches the confidence right back. Hey Zion, the uh, MVP chance got a little louder tonight, and it seems like it's gonna be a thing for the rest of the way. But what does it mean when you think about the last season and now when you're hearing those chants like? I think I missed that free throw. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? <laughs> it was one of those, oh, Lord. I, I got to make this next one. <laughs> uh, that's just the city of New Orleans. They they got a lot of love. Uh, I've been saying it for years. You know, Drew Brees told me when I first met him, if you love the city, it's going to love you right back. And um, it's a true statement. I love the city of New Orleans. Um, and I'm just glad they come out and support the way they do. Uh, you, you talked about the adjustments that the Suns made over the last couple of games. How much, like, like when you are playing, are you taking a mental data the first half and figuring out, okay, these are the type of coverages 
I'm seeing now and just on the sneak attack in the second half? How, how much is that a part of your game? Uh, I mean, I kind of watch film uh, on the previous games. Uh, not so much about the good things, more so about like what I did wrong and, okay, if I was able to do this, how would a team try to come at me different or with different coverages and stuff? But my mindset is always uh, just play the game the right way. Uh, they, they're they trying to blitz me. I trust my teammates to get off the ball and trust that we all going to make the right play. In these last couple of weeks, do you feel – different in the sense, do you, like, do you feel like you're putting something together maybe that you haven't done before? Like, do you feel a growth in your game in the last couple of weeks? Um, I do. Um, and I got to thank my coaches and my teammates for that. Um, especially Teresa Witherspoon and Corey Brewer. They're, they're always in my ear telling me, you know, don't be shy. Just be who you are. Uh, it's okay to express yourself and uh, you know show that energy. So, you know, thanks to them, I do I do feel that growth. Cause, I mean, with two people like that in my corner, uh, I can't ask much more. So I'm thinking back to last year when you were watching this team, when you were rehabbing. Were you thinking about at all of this team being in first? Did you envision anything like this? Were you thinking, trying to, you know, what can I do to make it happen? Uh. You know, absolutely. It was just one of those things where, you know, we added CJ, Larry, um, <clears throat> Trey, Herb, and Jose. They picked it up late in the season. And I, I said it in interviews last season. It's, it's hard to watch something like that, watch how the city reacts and not want to be a part of that. Uh, so I think for me it was more so watching film and figuring out where I could fit in while still allowing everybody to do them, grow, and, you know, win. Um, the kind of towards the end, a couple moments where you and Najee really got the crowd into it, just, you know, raising your hands and stuff like that. One, one question, just what did you think of this Sunday home crowd? And, and two, is, is that something you've been doing your whole life? I mean, even back from like high school, just getting the crowd into after a big ball? Uh, in high school, yeah. Uh, but when I got to college, uh, just being in Cameron and, you know, that small gym with the fans right there, that's when I really was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> I like when the crowd's into the game because, I mean, it gives everybody confidence. And even on away games, when their crowd's into the game, I mean, how can you not be, in a, as a competitor, how can you not be in an environment like that and want to thrive in that? No problem. You guys have a good night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.